From where? <laughs> Which one of Bronx? Which yeah. neighborhood? Pelham Bay. All right. Pelham Bay, Pelham Bay girl. <laughs> yeah. you, were, you were haunted, basically. <laughs> what, what's interesting about this film, I think, is it really captures that neighborhood feel. The yeah. characters feel so authentic. The locations, because they're authentic, right? This is filmed throughout the city. That's right. It feels very realistic. So could you talk a bit about what you brought of your own experiences being from similar neighborhoods in New York to this? And what did you draw from people you know to create these characters? Uh... Well, for me, I was a teenager at this time. Uh, I was kind of forming my own identity during the early 90s, so I got to see a lot of, you know, st things and news stories that were happening about, that the movie deals with. So a guy like Thomas, you know, someone that wants to be a part of the mafia at this time was was very uh, interesting for me to, to look at and examine, and, and now as an adult with the objectivity of being able to look back on the time and what it meant historically for you know, John Gotti, the Mafia, or what it meant at large was a, was a real cool thing to, to look at. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I grew up five minutes from you in, uh, on Morris Park Avenue in an Italian-American community. So, uh, yeah, I grew up very much like Thomas, and I grew up having this great love for films. And, I mean, I, I feel blessed to have found acting and was able to move in that direction. I, I always say if Thomas grew up in Ohio, he probably would have worked in a video store. But he grew up in, you know, in an Italian neighborhood where that world was very real and very accessible. Um, so he, all of it was, it was very live for me. I mean, this is my world. This is how I grew up. And, uh, and the early 90s was really profound for me because I was just leaving the Bronx, uh, just started becoming an actor, and exploring Manhattan and so excited to uh, be in that world. So it, you know, all the, the, the news and everything that was happening around at that time was really in there. So when I started to write it, it, it just started to flow out of me. It was just all there. The characters, you know, that time was, had such an effect on my life, more than I realized. So when I wrote it, it just flowed, it flowed you know. mob culture, I guess you could say. It was largely glamorized in film at that time and of course not long ago in, in recent films. Could you relate to being pulled in by a world that looks glamorous, seeing films maybe when you were growing up that made you want to be a part of something that you felt you weren't a part of? Oh yeah, I mean I, I grew up admiring a lot of mafia films, mob films, and uh, uh, so it was a huge influence on me, you know, falling in love with, with movies and wanting to be an actor. Uh, it, was, uh, it was definitely a, a part of it. And, and, and again, looking at that time, understanding what the media was doing to someone like John Gotti, you know, the Teflon Don, the nicknames, you know, creating this Robin Hood persona, uh, you know, sensationalized the whole thing. And I, that was one of the things I, I loved about the story, is that we get to explore this guy and this relationship in terms of the, the um, influence of cinema and the influence of media sensationalizing it, and then the reality of what's behind the door. Uh, it was just a, a really cool adventure to go on. Well, I hadn't known too much about Gotti until I once we saw the film, I actually started reading up a lot on him. I think this film actually, you can develop an interest in him after watching this because you do understand. You see him through a very different lens, you know, through the lens of the people, I think. Yeah. And I can now understand, I think, reading his biography, why people, especially in the Bronx, would be drawn to his story because he was someone who grew up poor and pulled himself up by his bootstraps, even if it was through illegal methods. And I love to know from your perspective was that part of was that part of the lore for you in terms of being interested in Gotti that this was somebody that really did something quite profound though controversial well I think a powerful figure like that is a lot of different things to a lot of different people and uh, he had a, a real knack or talent for governing his neighborhood um, with a very um, 
a big personality and the suits and the cars and the lifestyle. You know, he was almost a salesman for the lifestyle uh, on how he carried himself. So there was something, and as a teenager, you see this guy in the news, you know, strolling by in the double-breasted suits and you read the stories, he left a $20,000 tip or whatever it is. You know, you get to see like this larger than life character who happens to be, you know, a few blocks away. And um, it, was, uh, it was interesting. And uh, there was a question that came recently uh, from someone who watched the screening of it. And they said, you know, I had a hard time understanding Thomas until I saw the historical footage of the riot outside the courthouse. And I said, oh my God, there was a whole neighborhood full of people that were for this guy. And then, you know, it suddenly gave this, this person like permission to say, okay, I can accept this story. I understand the story. So, uh, you know, that was, I thought that was a beautiful use yeah. of that footage in the movie. Absolutely. And the other thing, I think both of you, if you look back at the, the films and the shows that you've done, there's a theme, a connecting theme of the pursuit of the American dream there. I was wondering if you could speak a bit about that, why you're drawn to those types of stories, or is that just maybe coincidence that these are these popular stories being told? What do you think, Michael? Well, The Sopranos had an element of, you know, the American dream, but it was kind of subverted by greed and selfishness, you know. Um, uh, so it's kind, of, it's kind of a tainted version of the American dream because it's at everybody else's expense, you know. It's by any means necessary and, you know, people get, you know, wiped out if they don't agree with what you're doing. Um, the, you know, when I was a kid, I watched The Godfather, and I was fascinated by it. And a lot of what I was fascinated by was the, the cohesion of the family, the way they protected each other. There seemed to be a certain code. People got, you know, got what was coming to them, you know what I mean? No, it, people, innocent people didn't get killed and stuff like that. And I kind of wanted to be around those people. When I was young, when I saw that movie, oh, you watch a movie like Goodfellas, I wouldn't want to be in the same room as any of those people. I don't think that movie glamorizes the mob at all. I mean, I find all those people horrifyingly frightening. Um, so there's, it all depends on the way it's portrayed. I mean, The Sopranos kind of did both things in a weird way. I don't know if I'd want to be around any of those people in reality, <laughs> to be honest. You know, I mean, they were pretty disturbed individuals, most of those, you know, the way they were portrayed. You know, they're not based on anybody real. Um, like Goodfellas, but um, I don't know if I've answered your question at all, but that's just some of my thoughts about it. Uh, no, I mean, it's tough to add anything to it. I think it's, uh, that's right on. Uh, there's, um, there, there's something dualistic in all of it. Uh, there's something very attractive, that code that you were talking about, you know, just stuck out with me is like something that in a way is Imagine if we lived in a world where someone's word was bond and you can rely on that and, and yeah. uh, f the idea of family protection and knowing that no matter what, someone was there to protect you. I think that's, that's romantic. It's beautiful. But then, you know, the other side of it is, you know, what you had described. It's subverted with greed and all that other stuff. So it uh, turns it on its head. People say that Donnie's downfall, I think, represented the end of the American mafia. Yeah, I think that, you know, he played things out in public and he played things out uh, for news cameras. And I think that had to do with, you know, pr probably his personality. And I, and I think because of that, it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And uh, as he was heading down, uh, Rudy Giuliani was heading up and was on a march to change the city. And um, I think all this was in the works and all this was happening, but I think it's really uh, that time and especially those two characters, it's where it all blossomed, you know? The end. 